Good morning, everybody. Today's going to be a little bit different style of video. Instead of doing one specific engine build, I figured let's cover all of our current engine builds in the shop at Smetting Performance. So today we're going to do more of a vlog style behind the scenes. What is it like from the moment we walked into the shop in the morning to the moment we leave the shop in the afternoon? What's it like in a machine shop right now with today's part availability shortages? Um, trying to navigate that climate and keep the ball rolling. So, currently it is 7.04. We're just now getting all the bay doors open. Shay already beat me here. Freaking got him. So Michael's in the back right now opening up the shop, getting the bay doors open, getting the air compressors turned on. And we'll kind of let our eyes adjust to the light. It's sun's not even up here in Texas whenever we get into the winter uh, months the sun won't even be up when we get here and then it's already starting to get dark whenever we're leaving the days are so short but while everyone's waking up I'll go over kind of what's in the shop at the moment uh, at the time of filming this video it is October 24th and we have SEMA 2022 coming up next week already so right now kind of the big thing has been getting all of our show motors put together and getting them ready to go in the truck so they can all be shipped down to Las Vegas. So we're going to take, this is a 632 big block Chev, it's our 840 horse deal. All it needs is the last final touches, fuel system distributor balancer, uh, we got to put plug wires in it still and then run our, uh, our uh, spark plug wire loom kit around it. Next to it, we've got one of our little 383s. I think this is a hot rod motor, technically. So it's a 420 horse, right? 840 to 420, half the, you know, that's, a, that's special. Not that this isn't, but 420 horse, about 460 torque. And that's kind of our bread and butter crate motor. That's what keeps the lights on. We sell a ton of these little suckers, and they're just awesome. Same thing, just waiting on the last final touches. Next to it, 540 Cruiser. Most popular big block Chev, short deck, fits into everything, 620 horse, 680 torque, tons of vacuum, works great, has an awesome torque curve. We got here our 406 Eliminator, similar deal, just waiting on some last final touches, valve covers, distributor. These are about 90% real deal engines. This one I don't think is going to get its valve train put together on in time, but I think these three are all fully 100% for real. Some of them are waiting on parts that we didn't get. Uh, this is going to be a long block to kind of showcase one of our more DIY type programs. So this is good for the guy who already has, you know, an aluminum intake. He's already got a four barrel carb and a little distributor in the back, but he wants to step it up so he can get a 383 cubic inch motor, put his fuel system, distributor, intake manifold already back on to this engine and he's got a anywhere from 380 horse to 480 horse little motor. So getting out of the seam of deals and these are just I think half of them. The other half have already been moved up front to the lobby. Let's keep going down the line. This is an LS6 rebuild that we're doing. So it had a blower on it and I think he popped a head gasket or something but it hydrolocked and you know, things happened. So it came in, we did our H-beam rod, little forged piston package, custom cam. I think it's just waiting on a timing set that should hopefully be here today or tomorrow. We'll see. So anyways, moving on. Another 632 big block. This is a 900 horse combo, pump gas solid roller. So our normal one, 840 horse, is hydraulic roller. And it's right there. It works great. I've never had an issue with them. But any more beans that we put on it, we're going to need to step up the solid roller. So this guy, this customer, was more than happy to do so. It just looks freaking awesome. The only part we are waiting on is the intake push rods to finish this monster. Exhaust push rods were in stock. How about that? Intake push rods? Not so lucky. And we have currently been waiting... This motor Shea built in June. I think it was one of the first motors you actually put together. 
in June, and we've been waiting that long for freaking intake push rods. So please be patient with your engine builders. We're, we're really trying out here. It's not easy, okay? I mean, we build the motor, we have everything we need to do it, assemble it, measure our push rod length, call the manufacturer, hey, I need to push rods. Okay, yeah, we'll have it in a few weeks. All right, sweet. A few more. A few more. A few more. So then it's like, all right, well, this one manufacturer is back ordered eternally, so what about another manufacturer? Same deal. For whatever reason, that length range push rod with that diameter and that wall thickness, the four or five manufacturers of push rods that I've called are all eternal back order. We don't know when we're going to get them. Just be patient. So we're waiting it out. I don't know what else to do about it. It's not like we can make our own push rods. I wish, but whew, that's a lot. It's not, it's not just cutting down steel. All right, fellers. So it's waiting. It's beautiful. It'll run. It'll get its own dyno video on the channel. Side to him, we've got our 572 blower motor. Real customer job. These are all real customer motors. The Only those were the show motors. Uh, this is our tall deck, 900 horse, 880 torque. Its supercharger is sitting right back there. Little dubin. It is waiting on EFI. Same deal. This motor has been done for not as long as the June. I think this motor was put together late last month, about a month ago. And we're still waiting on EFI. And what we do at Smetting is whenever you place an order with us, we require a 50% deposit. It's fairly standard. Most shops require a deposit. Got to make sure you're real. I mean, these are big money motors. And at that time, we order every special or every little odd end part that your motor needs that we don't normally keep in stock. You know, this is a big block twin carb or twin EFI blower motor. Um, the EFI units are just a lot of money to have tied up in inventory, so we generally just wait for the order and then we'll buy the EFI from Holly. So this order came in. Uh, let's peek over at the ticket here. This order came in in March. There it is. And we ordered the EFIs. And here we are in a late October. Still no EFIs. And it's all it's all changing. It's all changing so fast. Uh, 12, 10 months ago, I could order the EFI kit for that motor. And the next week, it'd be at the shop. And we put the PO on it, put it on the shelf. Okay, we got it. Whenever the motor's done, go on the dyno. And not so much. So we're trying to navigate that. Trying to pre-order parts ahead of schedule now. But uh, anyways, moving back along. This is a cool little dude. So this was going to be, or is, our basic standard 540 big block cruiser. But this guy wants to party a little bit. So he wants to put two stages of nitrous through it, equaling about four to 500 total. So we did the standard crank, standard rods. I have no problem with those. But on the piston, we upgraded the wrist pin and the ring pack to make to handle the extra heat. It's currently waiting on a billet steel core camshaft because it's probably going to turn a little more RPM. So we want a little more spring pressure on it. So we want to put a billet core in it instead of a standard os tempered iron or steel, whatever you want to call it. So that's going to get our 360 cc cylinder head. It's going to get a 4500 single plane billet cam. I think the cam specs on this guy are going to be 253, 263. Shea recites to me. He thinks I'm just the office guy keyboard warrior. He, he doesn't think I have it still. <laughs> so it's waiting on the cam. We'll wait for that to come in, and then that motor will go together. It'll dyno. It's actually running a Holly Dominator ECU with coil on plug and a big block chev. Kind of neat. Next to him, we have Dakota Cooks 416. You all have seen this in the channel already, a couple build series on it. Same deal. As soon as he placed the order, we ordered the high ram. And here we are, waiting on the high ram. So it should hopefully be here soon. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Once it shows up, we'll put this motor on the engine dyno. Do another video series on that. That'll be sweet. We're hoping this makes some decent power. I've ran these heads on a 441 on the engine dyno, but I haven't done them on a 416 yet. So I'm really curious to see how this motor does. 
this thing is a beast. Let's talk about it for a second. 427 small block Ford. Look at the head. It's on an LS. It's got a distributor in the front. But running a freaking high ram. And it gets better. This motor's running electric throttle body. Reach in there and whoop whoop. So it's gonna run a C6 Corvette pedal in the car, running through the Holly Dominator ECU, plug that sucker in, and we have a adjustable ramp curve so that as he opens or as he applies pedal pressure, the throttle body has a nice delay. Not a not a delay, but more of a smooth ramp up into the uh, as it starts to open up. And that's gonna really give this motor a lot of good drivability because it makes over 600 horsepower NA and over like 560 or 570 something foot pounds of torque. So that's a really cool feature. You can build a pretty radical engine that makes really good power, but will still drive so easily with these electric throttle bodies. And we're not done yet. It's running full vintage air system. So he's gonna have power steering and AC and he's running a dry sump. So we made our own little bracket that's gonna bolt the dry sump pump down here, out of the way of everything. It'll have its belt being driven off the crankshaft right here in the front. And his AC lines are gonna come across and plug into the compressor here. This is going into an early 60s road race Mustang out in California. And this is the motor for the guy who wants it all. Over 600 horse, big intake, EFI, electric throttle body, AC power steering, and a dry sump. So we're super proud of this motor. It's gonna get these really sick satin black fabricated valve covers. So once Dylan gets this thing all finished and polished up in the next hour or so, I'll give you all a final update before it ships out. That thing is freaking sweet. Coming to our more standard builds, this is a 383 Cruiser, I believe. So 380 horse motor. It's gonna run Holly EFI. I think this one's going into a, a early Corvette. I think it's either a C1 or an early C2. I can't remember what the customer was saying. So he's gonna run the, the kind of special Corvette script valve covers. Little alternator only kit. Whenever our customers buy a serpentine kit from us, like that vintage air, or a simple one like this, or like that big block where it's just an alternator, we run that system on the dyno. So we make sure the water pump has no issues and that there's no water pump leaks or anything like that. Because all these motors, no matter how powerful, all have a three year unlimited mile warranty. So when they, when they leave the shop, they have to be absolutely perfect. So we run them in the same condition the customer's gonna get it with the same parts. So water pump, same EFI, same distributor, same spark plug, same wires, same everything. So once Mike finishes up on this other show motor, which which one is this gonna be? The Extreme. This is gonna be our 450 horse show motor going to SEMA. So he's just finishing up, putting the heads on, putting the intake on. Once he's done there, we're gonna throw this 383 on the dyno and get it knocked out so it can leave today or tomorrow and get into its customer's hands. Uh, what's this guy? This is a 427 Ford SEMA motor, it looks like. Oh yeah, this one's actually running. Let me, help me roll this one over. Yeah, she's a tall boy. All right, there it is. That looks a little better. So, 427 Ford, this is going to Les Stewart in California. He's a good, good customer of ours. Builds a lot of really nice Mustangs. He's actually getting uh, this one also. So he's got a bunch of motors in the shop. I think he has four engines currently in the shop. Five if I count that. Uh, anyways, this is our 600 horse deal as well, but different. So we're running traditional single plane, but it's still full EFI. So sequential port injection, Holly EFI throttle body. It's got all the sensors already built into it. Really slick. And it's gonna run a standalone Terminator X in this guy. So that'll be cool. We're just waiting on an oil pan from Canton. Same deal. Motor was ordered. Let's play this game. Uh, where's Les's ticket? 
So that motor was ordered in July. Oil pan was ordered in July 6th. He needs a special oil pan to fit his chassis. We normally use Moroso on everything, but the Canton gives him like an extra half inch in the front. And the way he routes the steering system, it works way better. So we're waiting on the Canton oil pan. And I'm not trying to throw any manufacturer under the bus. It's everything. It's not like just one manufacturer screwing us. It's just the industry. It is what it is. It's not worth getting upset about. It's not worth calling people out about. This is just the new normal, you could say, for the parts game. So he's understanding. We are all understanding. It is what it is. We're going to wait out because he wants that pan for his chassis. But it's just so cool to see sequential port injection. Nice little throttle body on a big Ford. So that's what I've got on this side. Let's see what Shay's playing with. Today, what, what is this, big block week? Big block week, buddy. So up front, we have our 540 blown big block Chev. So the big brother, the 572, it's a tall deck. Our 540 is a short deck. So if you've already got short deck headers or your chassis with your brake booster can't run a tall deck motor, 540 is your dude. This is gonna get a dual keyed smetting forge crank and we cut that second keyway to give the blower drive way more support, makes everything way stronger. So this short block is gonna go together. It can get cylinder heads on it and then we're just waiting on the supercharger. Who are you building over here? What is cruiser. this? So this is another of our 540s. This is our cruiser model coming together for a customer. So same deal, six, 620 horse, 680 torque. Full hydraulic roller, valve train, pump and gas motor, 10 to 1 deal. You can drive this motor everywhere, do anything with it, and it will just give you no complaints and keep on rocking. So I don't know how to start talking about this one, so we're just going to jump into it. We did a build series, I think we made it to part 4, maybe it was part 3, maybe it was part 4, of a 1000 horse 632 big block Chev. And this motor is, it's pretty custom, it's pretty radical. There's a lot going on in it. And there was a mistake made, not on our end. We did everything right we were supposed to. However, we're currently had to take the poor motor apart. Here's all the rods, here's the rings. This big block runs an 18 degree, 457 cc cylinder head. And at this size and at this level of custom, a lot of the cylinder head uh, valve placements in the bore and in the head start to get moved from original big block Chev. So this cylinder head moves the intake valve a little bit to the inside compared to where it normally is and it moves the exhaust valve a little bit back. By moving the intake valve closer to the center of the bore, we unshroud it around the cylinder wall and it can flow a lot more air all the way around the valve instead of being choked on this side by the bore. So, whenever you move the valve, as you can imagine, the piston notch needs to move with it. So, I was building the motor, filming it for the channel, I was filming the piston and valve clearance episode, and unfortunately, our valves hit our pistons. Motor never ran, motor never did anything, it didn't hurt anything, everything's totally healthy. However, there was a miscommunication, not really on our end, but the good part about working with good companies is that even when there is a mistake, they take care of you. And that's what we do with all of our customers, and that's why we only work with manufacturers who will do that for us as well. So, I originally ordered the custom pistons for X cylinder head from X manufacturer, and the valve relief was in the wrong spot, so I communicated that to the manufacturer they said, don't even worry about it. We apologize for that. We'll get, you, we'll get you guys taken care of. And the next week, they had a full new set of custom pistons already on the way to us. And so that's why we like to work with good companies is because whenever there's a mistake, they stand up for themselves, take care of the problem, get us all taken care of. And actually now we have the new pistons here and they have the correct valve notch. It says Burdick's SR20, but this cylinder, it's the same head as the AFR 18 degree. And uh, so now they actually got the pit new, brand new pistons made in within a week, which is wild. Because if, you, if anyone has custom pistons on order, it takes a long time. And 
So now, Shay, once he finishes these two big blocks, and once we get through SEMA stuff, he can put this motor back together with the new pistons, and we're still waiting on ARP head studs, so it's not like we technically are out any time. We're still waiting on the studs to come in. So, that motor's in the works. Little boo-boo, part of the game though. And we'll carry on, we'll get it fixed. This is another SEMA motor, 427 Ford. Another one of Les Stewart's actually. Actually, no, this one's not. This is not Les Stewart's. This is Michelangelo's. Nonetheless, still another nice Ford, 427 deal, real shiny paint job. Really nice. This is a small bore LS7 that is currently waiting on its daily dry sump, full billet oil pan, billet dry sump pump, all internally routed, no external lines running to the pump, super slick, and it's also waiting on its small bore LS7 cylinder heads. This is another one that we're gonna dyno. I don't know if we're gonna film this one. Customers wants this one to be a little hush hush, and that's fine. This one's pretty cool, this is a road race not a road race Ford, but it could be. So it's got a Mall of Piston Pack, that dark gray coating, Johnson short travel axle oiling lifters. The customer already had this block machined by another shop, and then they unfortunately went out of business, so we inherited the build. So it's running our full rotating assembly, our custom billet core camshaft, and the cylinder heads and the eight stack manifold are currently at Nizer Racing in Houston, getting a little special work done to them. And once those parts arrive at our shop, we can finish this motor pretty easily. We've got everything to do it. So it'll go together real quick and smooth, get it on the dyno. It should make good power. I'm really curious to see how much power it makes over our standard eight stack, because he does have a really lightweight ring pack. He's got a nice little higher lift cam, not more duration, but just a little more lift. And then I'm curious to see what Nizer can get out of our cylinder head and eight stack combo compared to the AS CNC, just normal out of the machine program. Uh, and the last motor in the shop, that's at least on the floor. There's a lot of other motors in the back that are waiting on stands, honestly. This is a Marine 540 Big Chev that we built way back, I think in what, 2008? And he ran it forever and he was just like, hey, I've, it's over 10 years old. I would like to bring it back for a refresh or maybe make some more power. So we tore it down and we're putting it back together. Honed the block a little bit over, new pistons, and we're stepping it up as well. We're doing a billet core cam, doing our bigger 360 cylinder head, single plane 4500 manifold. And this guy should make decent power. We're hoping for 730, 750-ish. NA, pump gas hydraulic roller deal. So that'll be really sweet. So that's a quick rundown of what's going on on the floor in the shop. Uh, and like I said, it is now 7.30 in the day. So I'm gonna put up the camera and go take care of my responsibilities. Go answer the emails and the voicemails, play the office game for a little bit, let the guys in the shop work without me distracting them. And once I come back out of the office, we'll maybe have some updates and we'll keep going through the day with smetting and see how it ends up. Okay, so catching up now, it's been a few hours in the day. Dylan got this eight stack, I'm sorry, this high ram Ford looking super sweet. Valve covers are on it, plug wires are done up. So this motor is now ready to ship and we cannot wait to see it in action. We also got some local customers coming by to pick up two sets of our six bolt LS3 heads. They're gonna run our 650 spring kit with titanium retainers, all cast port. And in the future they can upgrade to the six bolt head, no problem. Mike's putting together the other set for them. So once we get these both sets knocked out, we can get them shipped. And then we'll jump on the dyno and we'll run that 383 that we mentioned earlier. Okay, moving through the day, that smetting behind the scenes. Our 383 is on the dyno, just about ready to start. Mike's putting on the last final touches. We're putting a little plate on to block off the mechanical fuel pump provision because we have EFI. With EFI, you have to run an electric fuel pump. So we're gonna block off the mechanical provision and run our EFI system. Motor's all hooked up. We run EGTs on all these engines so we can really make sure this tune-up is 100% efficient. An O2 sensor will get you close but these are pretty essential for knowing exactly what's going on inside of the engine. This customer is going to get this exact sniper and this exact distributor. 
So the distributor is already gonna be timed and adjusted and we're gonna load a tune-up into the sniper that we have refined over the thousands of engines that we have done here. Again, we build the same crate motors over and over again, so the tune-up gets really, really, really good. Anyways, once he's done, we'll get this thing fired up, get it tuned, and she can make some power. We just got this 383 Cruiser running. It's our smallest engine, actually, that we make across the board. It's a 380 horse, 440 torque. And this is intended for the guy who just wants a good, reliable, solid foundation that's got a warranty, it's turnkey, does the thing. He just wants a nice daily driver. So we're breaking in the motor right now, letting it warm up. You can see we got a good oil pressure, fuel pressure solid, coolant temps coming in. Um, ignore the EGT graph, some of the sensors aren't totally hooked up there. And yeah, we're gonna let this motor warm up. And once it's at operating temperature, we'll set our base ignition timing, set the idle tune-up on the Holly Sniper, and then we can start making some pools. Idle tune-up is put in the engine. We got our base timing set. We've got our fuel tune-up loaded into the Sniper. We've already broken in the motor, so now we can go straight to making pools. So let's see what it does on the first hit. So this motor has a pretty small camshaft. It's not going to do anything totally radical, but look at that torque curve. You know, this guy is not looking for max power. He just wants a super broad, usable torque curve that's just very easy and enjoyable to drive. Could we make this a 500 horse motor? Sure, that's easy. We're not after that though, because this customer doesn't want it. So we're going to look at this. Oil pressure looks solid all the way through. Torque curve looks good. Horsepower looks good. Everything's just going right along super smooth. So let's go straight into our second pool. And now what's cool that I wanna show you guys is if we overlay these graphs, you can see how the motor's breaking in. So the red curve is the second pull we just did, and you can see that it's above the blue curve all over the place up here. It's a little bit down here, but you can see the dyno kind of released the motor a little bit weird for some reason, so I'm gonna disregard that. But nonetheless, the rings are breaking in more. They're sealing up that piston, getting us a little bit more horsepower. So we're gonna do our minimum of five runs on this engine. Then once it's dynoed, broken in, making the power it needs to, we'll do a full inspection, make sure there's no oil leaks, nothing weird going on. And this motor can come off the dyno, it can go to our shipper, and he'll get it out the door to the customer. All right, there's our fifth pool finished up. You can see the final number is 411 horse, 485 torque. So we beat our uh, advertised ratings and this motor is totally healthy. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And here it is. Obviously these are just our dyno valve covers. They're not the real ones the customer is going to get. This engine is all good to go. It's got no oil leaks. Everything is super sealed up nice and dry. So we're going to pull this off the dyno uh, tomorrow morning once it cools off completely. And then it can ship. Simple as that. So if we come back up here, let's see what Shay was working on. So, okay, so here's that 540. This was a bare block this morning. Now it's a full sealed off short block. You can see we run our link bar lifter, nice forged piston, multi-layer steel head gasket, all the good stuff. He's getting his head bolts lined up. So once the cylinder heads are assembled, he can bolt them straight down, run the valve train, put an intake on it, and this dude's done and it can go on the dyno. Got some big block Chevy cams in, those billet core stuff. So those can now go. This poor orange motor has been here for a while. It was ordered uh, back in June. So we finally got the camshaft for it. So now this guy can also get heads, oil pan, timing set, the works, and it can dyno as well. So hopefully 
we can get both of these 540s dynoed this week and potentially get them shipped out before we have to shut down the shop for a week for SEMA. It's a, it's, it's a it's very fun game playing the logistics and the scheduling and who's gonna get built and who's gonna ship and yeah, I like it, I thoroughly enjoy it. The Ford motor is gonna ship today so it'll be leaving of course. And it's about 3.15 so we've got 45 minutes left in the day here at Smetting. And uh, I think that about wraps it up. We're just gonna keep working, keep our heads down, try to stay busy, try to be efficient. And uh, yeah, that's a Monday at Smetting Performance. Hope you guys enjoyed this kind of different behind the scenes video of just kind of showing what it's like in a machine shop in today's world. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. So we have next week's video, I believe is going to be a 13 to one high compression LS7 427 build. So that'll be a really good one and I'll see y'all then.